It seems that governments and intelligence agencies are always up to something super secret and possibly ever so slightly shady. The thing is, we really aren't supposed to know that much about any of it, so when they accidentally spill the beans or leave top secret documents on the bus, we can be quite shocked by the clandestine business being done in our names. And sometimes, they're just trying to train a cat. Yes, they actually did try to do this. Stay with us to find out more about this nonsense. From secret mind control operations to the actual truth about UFOs, here are 19 most secret projects governments don't want you knowing about. Number 19. The United States Sixth Generation Fighter Jet Nosy Parkers who enjoy watching what military stuff might be going on in the world have noticed that the United States government has been working on developing its next generation fighter jet. Well, the US government actually announced that this was what they were doing in the early part of 2022. The Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall made a statement that they had, quote, started a program to do the development aircraft that will take into production. These things generally take a rather long time to be seen through development and to completion though, and it's likely that it won't be an actual aircraft before the end of the decade. But it is still important to make sure that people know that you are working on one. You know, people like your mortal enemies and others that might also want to purchase a similar sort of machine for themselves if you have one. Although obviously much of the stuff about this fighter jet is shrouded in mystery, apart from the fact that it exists, they've all stated that it will definitely become the centerpiece of the new next generation air dominance system, which sounds as intimidating as it is supposed to be. So although they don't want you to know exactly what weapons and sensors and drones and whatnot that this aircraft will have, they absolutely do want people to know that it does exist. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 18. Area 51. Almost everybody has heard of Area 51, but almost nobody has ever actually been inside the place. It's so shrouded in myth and history, and yet it remains extremely secret. Area 51 is a secret United States Air Force military installation in the middle of the desert at Groom Lake in the south of Nevada. Over the decades, Area 51 has been at the center of a lot of conspiracy theories about aliens and UFOs and all that fun stuff. And despite all of the stories about this place, the only thing that's ever been officially confirmed is that this base is used as a flight testing facility. Since the 1950s, there's been so much speculation about the site, umpteen UFOs UFO sightings have occurred in the vicinity, and it's now a kind of mecca for alien hunters. It was during the 1980s that the biggest conspiracy theory really gained traction, when a man who alleged to have worked at Area 51 claimed that the government used the site for examining alien spacecrafts that they had recovered. The military installation itself is, naturally, not exactly a welcoming place, despite the amount of unsolicited attention that it receives. The base is marked out by posts watched by a zillion security cameras and covered by motion detectors. It's also patrolled by guards who dress in camouflage. They're known as camo dudes by devotees. The guards refuse to answer any questions about the base, or indeed their employers, like a shadowy contractor known as ACOM. Trespassers are warned that deadly force will be used against them, and there's no mistaking what that means. Number 17. The Hazardous Devices School in Alabama all of those bomb technicians have to learn their trade somewhere, and all the official ones seem to learn their stuff at the FBI's Hazardous Devices School in Alabama. The Hazardous Devices School, as well as having a bit of a mouthful of a name, is located at the Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville, Alabama, in the United States of America. Yeehaw! This school was established all the way back in 1971, when it was initially set up as a joint venture between the FBI and the U.S. Army. It would be designed to train and educate 
educate both new and experienced bomb technicians in this ever-changing world of threats and weaponry. And although they don't just let anybody in to nose around, well, it is not as if this place is exactly some sort of massive secret or anything. The facility is set in 455 acres and has classrooms, ranges for all the exploding stuff, and a bunch of mock-up scenes which includes a train station, an apartment building, a cinema, and a mall. These are not leisure facilities, but a place to practice defusing bombs in real-world environments. They use robots and simulations of all kinds of situations to keep learning and adapting as the sorts of bombs being built keep on changing. Oh, what a fun one. Number 16. Psychoelectric Weapons Up next, we have one for all those die-hard conspiracy theorists out there. This is the murky and mysterious world of psychoelectric weapons, whatever that might mean. But despite the really out-there idea of this, it seems that perhaps there's some substance to it after all. Psychoelectric weapons is basically all of that stuff about mind control. In this instance, it refers to a bunch of information that was obtained using the Freedom of Information Act in order to find out about a load of political stuff that had been going on. Except that they also received a file about mind control, seemingly by accident. So this file appeared to give an indication to what extent the United States government had been developing mind control initiatives. What was unearthed would shock even conspiracy nuts that had been saying all of this stuff all along. The NSA had indeed been tinkering inside the heads of individuals to try and run covert operations. The documents that were included in the file were not, however, official government papers. They were were more like a bunch of research into the previous times that mind control weapons had been looked into. So you know, it is enough to keep the conspiracy theories engaged, but not enough to say that it was definitive proof of any specifics. Exactly the sort of stuff required for a conspiracy theory in the first place. Number 15. Operation Condor during the late 1970s, Operation Condor was a campaign against anyone who spoke out against certain South American dictatorships. It was a violent campaign of repression to silence dissidents, and in more recent times, the true extent of this war has become clear, and movies and documentaries have highlighted just how barbaric and far-reaching this event had been. Operation Condor was basically a secret pact between South American dictatorships, which included Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, and others, in which they created an alliance to hunt and remove their enemies. These operations were performed during the 1970s and 1980s, and in the end it's believed that 171 opponents of the regimes were disappeared, tortured, and by the coalition of high-ranking officers from the military regimes. When the atrocities were brought to light after the collapse of those regimes, even former presidents were charged with conspiracy. Number 14. Dolce Base the conspiracy theories that surround Dolce Base are nothing short of outlandish, even bordering on bananas. But despite there being no real evidence of any of this stuff, here are a few things that some of the enthusiasts do think are going on in the place. Dolce is a town in New Mexico near the border with Colorado. Conspiracy theorists believe that there's a secret underground facility here in which there are some super shady experiments taking place. They say that there are incredibly advanced technologies, crazy animal-human crossbreeds, and all manner of other spectacularly bizarre happenings. All very top secret, of course. It's known to be highly guarded with extremely fierce security forces, and it's utterly forbidden to enter, you know, naturally. Number 13. Mount Weather there are a couple of secret facilities within the United States that are designed to be used as the place from which the government would operate in a certain high level of threat situation. Nobody especially wants to think about exactly what those sorts of situations would entail, but should there be a national disaster, the Mount Weather Emergency Operations Center in Virginia is the place where the highest level of military and civilian officials would be stationed. This kind of really sucks for the rest of us, because to be frank, we'll simply be left to deal with the disaster, or more likely die in our millions, leaving a bunch of government employees to repopulate the earth. And that thought is even more depressing than the dying part. 
The site would be used after the attacks of September 11th when almost all of the congressional leadership were helicoptered out to take refuge in Mount Weather. The general idea of this place is that it would support the systems of government even if the rest of the country is under attack or some other widespread state of emergency occurs. What a fun one! Number 12. The CIA tried to train a cat to be a spy. Now, I don't know about you, but I especially enjoy it when the CIA do more silly stuff like this rather than their standard covert scariness. This is the bizarre story of how, in the 1960s, the CIA had a project on the go that aimed to train a cat to be a spy. I know, it's ridiculous. You can't train a cat to do a darn thing unless it decides that that's what it wants to do. So the whole idea seems utterly absurd. Anyways, they had a big budget, and not the largest quota of common sense, so the CIA blew $15 million on this harebrained scheme. The project was known as Acoustic Kitty, and was basically seeing the CIA involved in putting a listening device into the ears of a cat and then trying to train it to sit next to people whose conversations they wanted to hear. You know, like when all the spies of the Cold War were always sitting on park benches to discuss top secret stuff with their newspapers. Anyways, if they had any idea whatsoever about cats, then they would never have even tried this, because cats will not do what you tell them to do. So guess what? Acoustic Kitty was a colossal failure. Maybe they should have tried with my pet guinea pig Twinkle. She listens pretty well, and usually does whatever you ask her to do. If you're nice, give her a little kiss on the cheek, you know. Number 11. Fjork, the Five Eyes. The creepy sounding Five Eyes is an intelligence alliance between the United States, the UK, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. Each nation presumably represents one of the five eyes in the spying gang. These five countries are all a part of a treaty that requires them to participate in cooperation in signals intelligence. This means that whatever nosy Parker business they do with their own communication surveillance systems, they're supposed to share with the rest of the class. This stuff is at the core of the special relationship between the United States and the UK and the Commonwealth countries, an alliance of Western powers to ensure a certain amount of shared intelligence in the benefit of each nation. This group came about in one form or another during the Cold War. It was formalized as an intelligence sharing arrangement in the late 1960s with the Echelon system. This is basically the code name for the Five Eyes Project, but shh, it's a secret. Number 10. Project A119 in the 1950s, everyone was completely obsessed with nuclear weapons. The idea of the bomb was in every aspect of life in the United States, and people lived in daily fear of getting new. In fact, the idea of setting off nuclear bombs was so fully embedded into culture that as the space race developed during the 1950s, the American intelligence community had some rather peculiar plans for the moon. By the time that John F. Kennedy gave his speech about sending people to the moon, there had already been a bunch of covert plans about similar but considerably less benign trips to that particular rock. U.S. intelligence had a plan, which was known as Project A-119. This was where they were trying to figure out whether or not it was feasible to detonate a nuclear weapon on the moon. You know, they'd blown them up in the desert, under the oceans, and in the sky, so they figured where else can we destroy? and the moon looked like a good bet. Luckily, they decided that they would send people instead of bombs, so in the end, that happened rather than yet the more insane bomb nonsense. Number 9. Project Stargate here we are with some proper conspiracy theory stuff that has been confirmed to be a real project undertaken by the United States Army. Not tremendously reassuring, really, but then again, it makes good content for movies and such. Back in the 1970s, the United States got wind that the USSR was spending loads of money on so-called psychotronic research. And anything that Russia was doing, well, the United States had to do it too. So they began trying to poke around inside people's heads in order to weaponize the brain. This project had a bunch of different names, including Stargate, Gondola Wish, Center Lane, Grail Flame, and many more. And until 1991, they had settled on Project Stargate. The general idea of this thing was to test the potential for using psychic phenomena for use in the military and in domestic intelligence. There were a few individuals 
individuals who spent some years trying to see events or places and information from a huge distance by using their psychic abilities. Although it went on for some time, it was not given an enormous amount of resources. They say the whole Fandango was run from an old and leaky barracks, and even so, it continued until 1995 before being terminated and declassified. The 2009 movie The Men Who Stare at Goats was inspired by Project Stargate. Number 8. MK Ultra. The top secret CIA project known as MKUltra has gone down in infamy since evidence of its techniques would be made public in 1975, and it's actually rather shocking. The project was conducted by the CIA to assess whether or not LSD and other could be used for mind control that might be weaponized for the use in intelligence gathering and other delights like psychological torture. They performed hundreds of clandestine experiments during the time that MKUltra was active between the years of 1953 and 1973. Sometimes the people upon which they experimented were not party to their own participation in the experiments. The experiments included more than 150 people being exposed to a variety of things, from psychedelic and paralytics to electroshock therapy. They were attempting to test whether or not the limits of LSD and other things would be good in brainwashing and other psychological control techniques. In the end, the use of LSD was seen as being too unpredictable for counterintelligence operations, and they used numerous unethical and dangerous methods to test these things and caused untold damage to the people upon whom they experimented. The secrets of MKUltra came to light during a congressional investigation investigation into the widespread illegal activities of the CIA within the United States and elsewhere in the world. Number 7. Constant Peg Program Back in the Cold War, there were persistent rumors that Soviet aircraft were being tested in great secrecy within the United States. These rumors were ignored by the official people who could answer such things, but then in 1998, the U.S. Air Force made some details of these programs public. It turned out that they had indeed flown Soviet-built fighters in test flights out of the Tonopah test range in Nevada. The program ran from 1977 to 1988 and was known as Constant Peg. It was designed to train American pilots to fly against the Soviet-designed aircraft of the enemy so that they could better defeat or defend against them. And this was just one part of an extensive range of programs that the United States Air Force, Navy, and Marine air crews were part of doing that era. The general idea was, of course, to teach them how to come out on top in any situation. which is, after all, the goal in any armed combat scenario really now, isn't it? Number 6. Project Thor well, here's a fun one to add to your overactive imagination banks. Hopefully it doesn't give you any nightmares. As if all the existing weaponry wasn't worrying enough, there's a hypothetical idea of something which is known as kinetic bombardment, or kinetic orbital strike, which is where orbit is used to sling a bunch of kinetic energy weapons at the surface of the planet. The energy that the kinetic projectiles uses comes entirely from the kinetic process rather than any kind of explosive materials. Well, that's fun now, isn't it? This project began its life in the midst of the cold you know, when the leaders of the world were hell-bent on slinging stuff at each other from space, and they really didn't seem overly concerned if they happened to any of us dead in the process. Project Thor is the U.S. Air Force's highly sophisticated weapons program that uses the power of space to do its worst. Although the Outer Space Treaty of 1967 prohibits the United States from deploying any kind of nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons in space, thank goodness there's nothing in that treaty about kinetic projectiles. Well then, that probably means that it's completely fine, right? You know, probably. Number 5. Project Azorian Project Azorian is the code name for the CIA's secret mission in which it had planned to raise a sunken Soviet submarine from the bottom of the Pacific Ocean so as to discover its secrets. This information came to be declassified in 2010, but the project itself had been planned all the way back in 1974. This was to use a purpose-built ship called the Hughes Glomar Explorer in the waters of the Pacific about 1,600 miles to the northwest of Hawaii. This massive and top-secret project was one of the most expensive intelligence operations of the entire Cold 
It cost about $800 million, which today amounts to about $4 billion. They designed the ship and equipped it with a special lifting cradle, working with scientists to figure out how to preserve the papers and other items that had been underwater for years. They were hoping to get their hands on the sunken vessel's code books. In the end, Project Azorian was able to recover a section of the sunken submarine. A large part of it had been broken off during the recovery process. Two nuclear torpedoes were recovered, various components, sonar equipment, and allegedly some paperwork. The bodies of six crewmen were also recovered, and they were given military honors and memorials and were buried at sea. The operation footage that was recorded by the CIA remains classified even until this day. Number 4. Vault Number 7 a massive dump of documents dubbed Vault No. 7 was released by WikiLeaks. These documents were all related to the United States Intelligence Services. Vault 7 included more than 8,761 documents that WikiLeaks claimed had come from the Central Intelligence Agency, you know, the CIA. These included a heap of stuff that was related to the agency's hacking abilities, and it was stuff like how the CIA breaks into phones, usurps communications apps, and the tools that they have for poking about in all kinds of electronic devices. It was pretty damning stuff. There were details detailed descriptions of specifics like how the CIA and British intelligence services had worked together to make smart televisions into improvised surveillance devices by hacking into them and compromising their security. All of this was alarming in many ways, but the thing that everyone really harped on about was how the CIA seems to be utterly useless at keeping its own secret documents, well, secret. And that does seem to be a bit of an issue when you consider that secrecy is literally their main job. Number 3. Project Ice Worm here we are again with another nutty scheme from the Cold Era, where this time the United States was up to some funny business in Greenland of all places. In 1960, the United States made an agreement with the Danish government. Greenland is part of Denmark, whereby the US would build a massive military facility in the northern part of that Arctic state. Oh, and it would also be underground you know, like a Bond villain's secret lair. Seems pretty reasonable, nothing to see here. The real purpose of this initiative was actually to build a series of huge owner ice tunnels through which they would be able to store, transport, and even launch an array of special designed nuclear ballistic missiles. This place, with its proximity to the USSR, was supposed to make it impossible for the Soviets to defend against the United States in the event of a nuclear conflict. Project Ice Worm went ahead, and for a few short years, the United States dug into the Greenland ice and began the task. Unfortunately, though, the whole thing began to go a bit sideways when the ice sheet in which they were building went, well, a bit sideways. The structure was simply too unstable to support this sort of thing, and by 1965, the whole facility would be abandoned. They did, however, leave a bunch of stuff behind that's going to start leaking into the water as climate change melts more and more of the ice, and that stuff includes loads of diesel fuel and some choice nuclear waste just for good measure. Oh, what a great legacy. Number 2. The X-37B the secretive and unmanned orbiter that is known as the X-37B belongs to the United States Air Force. But what is it, and what does it do? Well, this thing looks a lot like the space shuttle, but on a distinctly smaller scale. It's bullet-shaped, black and white, and has small wings, much like that much more famous space vessel. This one, however, is not designed to carry humans on space missions like the NASA spacecraft, with which we're all familiar, but rather, this one's designed to go out and do the secret work of the U.S. Air Force out in space. The orbital test vehicle is unmanned. It's designed to spend months on end in orbit and to carry out top-secret classified missions for the American military space program. It's shrouded in secrecy, so that's led to plenty of speculation about what the space plane might be up to. The things that it seems to be doing, like testing an ion thruster, doing a NASA materials experiment, doesn't really live up to all the crazy space weapons ideas that have been thrown around by the conspiracy theorists out there. But who knows what they might really be doing? Do you have any ideas? Go ahead and vent about it all in the comments section down below. Number 1. Project Blue Book Ah, uh, finally, we're getting to some 
aliens, actual real life bona fide alien activity. Well, hopefully. This is the United States Air Force's Project Blue Book. These are basically the records of a whole bunch of investigations into unidentified flying objects. The project was closed in 1969, but the records from it have recently been declassified. During its time between 1947 and 1969, Project Blue Book had reported to them a total of 12,618 sightings of so-called UFOs. Following their investigations, a total of 700 101 sightings remained unidentified, and those must have been the aliens. The project was ultimately terminated because they established that no UFO had ever given any indication of being a threat to national security. There was no evidence that there was any technology involved that was not in the range of the present-day knowledge, and they also identified no extraterrestrial vehicles. For these reasons, they concluded that there was no further need to keep on investigating UFOs. The information that would eventually be released in these archives also stated that there were no, and that there had never been, any remains of extraterrestrial visitors stored at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. This information also included a statement that the so-called Roswell incident of 1947 had never involved any locations of, or make any further developments to, the story that there had been any sort of UFO incident that had been covered up. Which is a bummer, as far as the aliens go, really. I'm kind of disappointed, aren't you? Although, when do we ever really believe any of those official documents that are released to the public? Thanks for taking that trip through the more bizarre and alarming secret projects that the government doesn't want anyone to know about. Which of these has made you more paranoid? Is the CIA listening to you through your television? Why, my friend, would they be interested in you? As always, let me know all of your splendid thoughts in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.